Southern Gothic is a podcast that explores the history behind the American South's darkest days, greatest mysteries, and most chilling ghost stories. But today, we aren't hitting the history books. We're going to go down to the campfire for our annual Halloween tradition of 13 spooky tales over the course of 13 nights. So if you've been listening to the show for a while, you've probably caught on to some of the classic ghost story types, right? There's just all these different kind of archetypes. Like there's this one type of ghost who's called a lady in white and she's always searching for something. Maybe she's mourning or she's lost. And a lot of stories about her talk about folks seeing this type of apparition, a lady in white on the side of the road, a dark road that they might be driving down. Then after they pick her up, talk to her and drive her home or wherever she wants to go, they turn around to realize there ain't nobody there in the back seat. She's just gone. Well, this particular archetype is so prevalent in ghost lore that I probably told y'all at least a dozen versions of this type of story over the years. In fact, I even did one from out in Arkansas during last year's Campfire Tales, a road out there. But recently, I discovered a few stories out in Virginia about a different type of apparition. They called her the woman in black. And y'all, she does not seem as friendly as the hitchhiker. In March of 1902, the city of Roanoke, Virginia experienced a brief but chilling period of time when the apparition of a purported woman in black began appearing throughout town. Folks who saw her claimed she stood about 5'10 in height and was dressed in black from head to toe in what looked like a long black cloak. Atop her head, she wore something like a black turban, some type of wrap that wrapped in such a way that it also served as a mask. The fabric drawn around her face so that only her eyes could be seen. Men who came face to face with this entity said that from what little they could see of her, they knew she must be incredibly beautiful behind that mask. But as odd as this was, it was what she did that made it truly chilling. It's said that she would appear to married men in the evening, often on their way home from work, rising up from the earth to join them as they walked under the moonlight. And as she did, she regally glided across the ground by their side, without ever making a sound. However, some men who claim to have been joined by the woman in black do acknowledge that when she appeared, she called them out by their names. Of course, when they'd arrive home, the woman would disappear without any trace. One of the more well-known accounts came from a prominent merchant in the city who, due to it being payday, meant that he had to keep his shop open until after midnight. Well, That evening, as he began his walk home, completely lost in his thoughts, he heard a voice call out his name. Then, when he turned, he was face to face with that apparition who stood only a few feet behind him. So the man sped up and walked faster, but the woman in black did not struggle to keep up with him. In fact, she seemed to show no real effort whatsoever to maintain his pace. She just regally glided over the ground, silently. Now y'all, this was only one of many creepy encounters that men from Roanoke had with this woman in black. Reports like this happened each and every night, night after night. Two other accounts came from a porter and a young telegraph operator. Both were of course married, and in each case, the mysterious entity appeared to them late at night on deserted streets just as she had with the merchant. But neither of these men had the same nerve as him. They were absolutely terrified, and upon seeing the woman in black and hearing her call their name, both took off in a sprint, running all the way home in absolute fear. And of course, when they got there, the woman in black was gone. Well, as I said, this happened to numerous men in Roanoke, night after night in March of 1902. 
But eventually, one night, she just stopped appearing. Now, after all of that time and all of those reports, you might wonder, who was that woman? And more importantly, what exactly did she want with all of them married men, right? Well, some claim that she was the widow of a man who was murdered on his way home from work one night, and that she now accompanies married men to protect them for their wives. But there are others who believe that she is actually a bitterly heartbroken wife of an unfaithful husband who is now doing a favor for the local women by keeping their spouse on the straight and narrow, stopping him from getting into trouble after work. And in some cases, folks have even suggested that she might have even flirted with them, testing their faithfulness on the way. Now, which one was it? Well, we'll probably never know, but either way, it seems her intention was to protect the women of the local community from experiencing pain like she had felt in her own life whether it was from heartbreak or grief. And y'all, I guess if that takes scaring a handful of local married men to make that happen, it just is what it is. Southern Gothic is an independent podcast produced by siblings Brianne and Brandon Schecksneider. And this mini episode was part of our annual Campfire Stories, a series to get you in the spirit for Halloween. We'll be back with an all new full length episode on October 31st. So y'all stick around if you dare.